Hello everybody, welcome to the Gricosophy channel once again. My name is Stam, Gricosophy, the channel that gives you all the information you need about Greece. So make sure that if you like, love or interested in Greece, you click that all important subscribe button. Today we're going to have yet another video, or we're going to be watching yet another video about Greek salad, one of the very important <laughs> elements in Greek life, uh, something that I'm very passionate about. Um, as I said in previous videos, we have made our own video on uh, facts about Greek salad, how to make an authentic Greek salad. The link to that video is in the comments of this video below. But today we're going to look yet again um, another video from another YouTube channel uh, that seems to be diverting a lot of traffic to the Glycosophy channel. And that video is from a channel called Food Wishes. Uh, it has a, it's a very, very popular channel, uh, almost 4 million subscribers, so <laughs> it must be doing something right. And this particular video is called Big Fat Greek Salad. Okay, so I'm expecting a big fat Greek salad in a massive bowl the way that I like it. Um, most probably, or no, I can see that it's most probably based in America. Uh, so again, I'm interested to see what the Americans say about an authentic Greek salad because in a previous video we checked one of those videos and it had dressings, etc. So I wouldn't really call it authentic. Uh, it was delicious salad, but not an authentic Greek salad. Uh, but this is again one of the videos that uh, seems to be uh, diverting people to watch uh, our videos. So I had to have a look at it and see what it was all about. So. Headphones in hand, and let's press play to see the big fat Greek salad. Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with my big fat Greek salad. That's right, I did think I was the first one to think of this name. But after a quick search, I realized others had thought of this before me. However, the good news is so many people thought of this that I still get to use it. Okay, a little bit underwhelmed uh, of the picture of the Greek salad there. Um, purely because everything is cut into tiny, tiny pieces. And as I've said in other videos, a Greek salad has to have chunks, large chunks. Every ingredient has to be in large chunks uh, because you need to be able to use your fork and pick up all these uh, ingredients uh, from the Greek salad bowl uh, and unfortunately with such tiny pieces there you are going to be using a spoon to eat the Greek salad and that is not very traditionally Greek either but let's see let's see maybe it gets better all right if just one person was using this I would have had to think of something else like Zorba the Greek salad or something like that but anyway the surprising part isn't that other people thought of this name it's that after all these years I still hadn't done a video for this so with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping the star of the show, a couple nice big cucumbers. And if you're using the regular ones, you should probably peel them. But with these English cucumbers, you can actually eat the peel. So I don't have to peel them, but what I am going to do is take this channel knife and actually go around taking off some strips of the skin for no other reason than to give this a little more visual interest. And if you have a zester, take a look. It might actually come with that tool. Okay, a lot of them do. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and cut these in half. And then we'll cut each of those pieces in half lengthwise. And then eventually into quarters. At which point, as usual, we'll go ahead and turn those this way. And cut across into nice equal slices. Somewhere I'd say between a quarter and a half inch. Or I think in a head, I want these sort of the same size as our tomatoes. Okay, I'm not a big fan of Greek salads where every ingredient is like a totally different size. But anyway, we'll go ahead and slice those up. Okay, now I understand why those pieces uh, are very small. Uh, he doesn't like the uh, pieces to be of an equal sizes. So um, it looks like for this channel, how the food looks is as important as how it tastes. Uh, for me, it's a bit of uh, too, too elaborate for me. Uh, you know, a Greek salad or village salad, as it's called in Greece, comes from the villages. So the villages are not going to spend all the time cutting the pieces into equal portions uh, or equal sizes, etc. Et they just cut them really hard, throw them in the bowl, lots of olive oil, eat, and then go again in their farms. As simple as that. So a bit of an elaborate. Um, 
Again, I personally don't like the skin uh, left on uh, the cucumbers purely because most of the time the skin is a little bit bitter and you don't want bitterness in the Greek salad. Um, I would personally, I like the thickness of, uh, of of the slices, but I would personally leave them halved rather than quartered. Uh, but, you know, let's see. And then we could transfer those into a bowl and start mixing our salad, but I'm actually gonna transfer them into a colander because I'm gonna do one optional step first. The old salt and rinse, which means I'm gonna sprinkle over about a tablespoon of kosher salt and then give these a quick toss, at which point I'm gonna let them sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before rinsing the salt off and draining them. And while I did say this step is optional, it's also mandatory. Basically, we're drawing out a little bit of the bitterness. And because we're removing a little bit of the water, we're actually gonna get a little bit of a denser, crispier texture. So we'll go ahead and let those sit for, like I said, about 10 to 15 minutes, which will be the perfect amount of time to slice up some of our other ingredients. Okay, now he said that by doing this, we're removing a bit of the bitterness. So, for me, if you think that the skin of the cucumber has bitterness in it, then there's no point using the skin or doing this particular thing with the salt because you're not gonna get you're gonna get rid maybe some of the bitterness, but not all of it, guaranteed. So if you think that the skin is bitter, you just peel the cucumber. You don't leave any skin on because a bitter Greek salad is really awfully tasting. You don't want any bitterness in there. So sorry, uh, food wishes, but if you say that you're using that not only to get a little bit of water, which is a clever technique, um, but also the bitterness, no. Um, if, if your cucumber is bitter, you don't use it. As simple as that. For example, these beautiful toy box tomatoes. And for most of these, I'm just gonna simply slice them in half. All right, we might have a couple big ones we can cut in quarters, but generally by cutting these in half, we're gonna get something that's pretty close to the size of our cucumber pieces. And of course, just because I'm using cherry tomatoes doesn't mean you can't just cut up some regular ones. All right, you are after all the Socrates of your tomato varieties. And yes, if you want to show off, you can cut two at once. But either way, we'll go ahead and cut up whatever we're going to use. Okay, um, maybe a Greek person in Greece will be laughing at the size of the tomatoes that uh, they're used there because in Greece you use really large beef style tomatoes that are very juicy as well because you want the tomato to be not only tasty and aromatic but juicy. Uh, but uh, away from the Mediterranean, uh, it depends. For example, here in the UK it's very rare to find a, a large tomato that is also tasty and juicy. Uh, so instead you can use the, the important thing is try to find tomatoes that are very, very tasty, sweet, tasty, and ideally if you can get some juices out of them, that is the bonus, um, but it's important. So yes, if the only tasty tomatoes you can find are small and those varieties that uh, are used over there, then so be it, that's absolutely fine. And once that's out, we'll go back and check our cucumbers, which at this point have been sitting here for about 10 minutes. And as you could hopefully see in just that short amount of time, that salt has already leached out a couple tablespoons of liquid. And what we'll want to do at this point is go ahead and rinse these thoroughly under cold water. And then once rinsed, we want to let these drain very, very, very thoroughly. Okay, at least another 10 or 15 minutes. And then what we can do while we're waiting for those to drain is go ahead and slice up the rest of our ingredients. Okay, a little bit confused here because we are spending 10 minutes with the salty cucumber to drain some excess liquid, which wasn't a lot anyway and then we're gonna put water <laughs> again in the cucumber and leave it for another 10 minutes to drain for me it doesn't make a lot of sense and put it this way the original liquid from the cucumbers that that that, that water which wasn't very much was probably a teaspoon maximum in there now if you had used the cucumber straight into the bowl that liquid would have mixed with the tomato juice, would have mixed with the olive oil, the saltness of the feta, and it would have made a great juice. So by taking away that liquid that comes from the cucumber, and instead adding water from the tap <laughs> into the cucumber and drain it again, it, it, it is 20 minutes lost in, or wasted in, in making that Greek salad. Uh, I, each to their own devices, but I like to keep things very simple. Um, you know, for, for me, that is a bit of a waste of time. But hey, if you have enough time, you can do that as well. Which will include some red onion that we want to slice very thinly with a very sharp knife. Okay, it's a proven scientific fact that people that don't like onions probably grew up in households that had really dull knives. 
which will crush the cells of an onion instead of slicing through, which makes them very, very harsh. Okay, so use a nice sharp knife and slice very thinly. And don't be a hero. When that piece gets too small to slice thinly and safely, stop and use that in something else. Okay, chop it up and make a big fat Greek omelet or something. And then besides our onion, we also want to do a little bit of red bell pepper, which as you well know, we usually just cut into strips and then slice across to dice. But this time for something a little extra special, why don't we turn our knife at like a 45 degree angle and cut something that's more like a diamond shape? All right, as you've heard me say before, people love pointy food. So we'll go ahead and cut some pepper diamonds before moving on to the last major ingredient, our Greek olives. Okay, before he starts on the olives, um, yes, you can cut the onion th as thinly as that. That's all right. Uh, I personally prefer it a little bit chunkier so I can get it with my fork. Uh, now with the pepper, a, a green bell pepper is normally is the norm in a Greek salad. But uh, as I said in another video, if green pepper is not as tasty, you can use a, a yellow or even a red. Again, for me, the pieces are way too small. Um, if you slice it lengthwise as there and then cut it in half or di diagonally in half uh, to add a little bit more in there, that would have been better for me. And I can see there that he's about to also cut the olives. So again, uh, not something that I would do in a Greek salad. And I have two types here. The purplish black famous Kalamata olives, which we'll simply cut in half. And then some nice big green olives, which I'm not sure where they're from. Okay, I'm going to be repeating myself again, in because uh, I've said it in other videos. Try to use unpitted olives. And the reason for that is that pitted olives have a chemical processing uh, method in them to keep them looking like olives once the pit has gone away. Otherwise, if you take the pit off an olive and you leave it in, in liquid, it's just going to dissolve or open. Uh, so try to have normal and pitted olives in there and don't cut them. You know, just grab the olive from the bowl, put it in your mouth and take the bit out and throw it away. It's as simple as that. And you burn more calories by doing that as well. Yeah. Let's say Greece. And because we have the Kalamatas, just for a change of pace, let's go ahead and slice these the other way. And that's it. Assuming our cucumbers are now well drained, we can go ahead and put this salad together, which means adding everything to this nice big bowl so we have plenty of room to toss. At which point we can go ahead and add our herbs and seasonings, including a whole bunch of freshly chopped oregano, which really is the herb you want to go with here. Yep, I absolutely agree. Uh, the only herb you should go in a Greek salad is oregano. Uh, if you find it fresh, even better. Uh, if you find it dried, that's fine as well. We'll also do some freshly ground black pepper and a little bit of kosher salt, but be careful. Because the olives are salty, and we already salted our cucumber, and we still have to add some feta later. And we'll finish up with a little shake of the cayenne. Did I hear that right? Cayenne pepper in a Greek salad. Come on. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Black pepper and salt are enough. No cayenne peppers or any chilies or anything like that in a Greek salad. The Greek salad is not spicy. It is a mixture of sweetness blended with saltiness. Uh, that's as far as it goes. And then the first of our two ingredients that make up our dressing. Uh-oh, I've heard the, <laughs> the all-important alarming word, dressing. What is it with Americans and dressing? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Oh man, this this is a nightmare because I I don't want to sound nasty or or to criticize way too much, etc. You know, it's not it's not because I uh, you know I'm not a professional chef or anything. Um, but Greek salad, <laughs> you know, olive oil. That's all it needs. Olive oil. No no fancy dressings. No fancy dressings. So the big fat Greek salad at the moment, if there's a dressing going on, it's not going to be very Greek at all. And we have to, we must start with the red wine vinegar. Okay, if you only remember one thing from this video, is that you have to sprinkle in your vinegar first, and then toss everything, and then add the oil. Okay, if we add our oil first, it's going to coat the vegetables and basically waterproof them, and that beautiful red wine vinegar will not penetrate. So what we want to do, what we must do, 
is add our vinegar first, and then give this a thorough tossing, and then we can drizzle in our oil. And of course, as usual, I will give the amounts in the blog post. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't use a dressing per se. Um, he just put a little bit of vinegar and then olive oil. Now, there are very few people in Greece that use a little bit of vinegar in their salad. Very few. It's not something common. But that's okay. I'm not going to say you did it completely wrong. Uh, I would personally like to have a lot more extra virgin olive oil than uh, he put in that salad there because you will see it as he will toss the salad in a minute there's not going to be any liquid at the bottom left and that is a dry salad uh, if you ask a, a Greek although I am just going to guess because this is totally to taste and then what we'll do once our oil has been drizzled in and everything's been mixed is we'll stop and we'll add about two-thirds of our feta cheese which you can just go ahead and crumble but I do prefer to dice it and what I like to do is mix in about two thirds at this point, and then we'll mix this all up and let it sit for a while. And then we'll add that last third right before we serve it. Yes, something I said again, please try and use the whole lump of the feta cheese in the bowl, because if you crumble it or if you dice it, the minute that you start blending and mixing the salad again, a lot of it is gonna go to waste because it's not gonna reach your fork, it's not gonna reach your mouth, it's gonna be left at the bottom of the bowl, and unless you have somebody scraping the bottle of the bowl, it's just gonna go to waste. And that's a waste of good Greek feta cheese. So uh, it may look nice in the bowl, it may look nice, uh, nice to, to, to take photos with, uh, but when it comes to serving it to your friends and your family, you want that big lump of feta in the middle of the bowl, and then once you serve it, you cut it in big chunks so, uh, so, you know, so people can you know, take some and, and eat it. Otherwise, it's gonna go to waste. And that way, this portion of cheese can sort of start absorbing the flavors of the salad, as well as, of course, giving up some of that salty flavor to the other ingredients. And then, like I said, we'll add the rest later. So we'll go ahead and add the cheese and give it a thorough mixing. And then once that is all combined, we'll go ahead and wrap it with plastic and pop it in the fridge for between 30 minutes and an hour. But that's just me. Some folks say you should serve it immediately, and other folks say it should sit overnight. No, 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 no. You definitely don't want to leave a Greek salad overnight in your fridge, especially if you have already added vinegar and olive oil, because everything is going to go soggy and it's not going to be very nice overnight. Trust me. Yes, you can leave it for half an hour, an hour in the fridge, but ideally, uh, you know, serve it, you know, as, 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 as quickly uh, as you can. Um, uh, but I, I know sometimes people, you know, if you have uh, a big thing, a, a lot of things to make, uh, they can prepare the Greek salad. Most of the times you don't add the olive oil until the minute that you serve it. Uh, so you don't get any soggy vegetables in there. So they prepare it, they cover it, they put it in the fridge for half an hour, an hour. And when it's time to serve it, they take it out of the fridge, they add the olive oil, give it a good sauce and they serve it. But definitely not overnight. Um, overnight, you know, you, you chop any vegetables and leave them in the fridge overnight, they're gonna go bad. Uh, they're not gonna be as, as good the following day, so definitely not overnight. Okay, so you'll have to decide exactly how long to let this sit. I mean, you are after all the Play-Doh of when to plate, bro. So come at me if you want. But personally, I think it's best if you let it sit for between 30 and 60 minutes. At which point we'll go ahead and pull that out and unwrap it and give it one last final mix. At which point, of course, we're gonna to have to taste this for seasoning and check to see if it needs more salt or more vinegar or more oil or whatever. Okay, don't be surprised if you're gonna to have to adjust a little, but I'm happy to report mine was perfect. Okay, you can see a little bit of liquid at the bottom, but um, if you're Greek, you're gonna be demanding a lot more than that. So I would personally add a lot more um, extra virgin olive oil in that. Um, it is a good video. He uses freshest ingredients, some techniques as well, you know, the salting, salting the, the cucumber, etc. Uh, so, yes, I mean, I, you know, I haven't found anything that wouldn't go in, in a Greek salad. Uh, he used the right. The only thing that I would never put is the cayenne pepper that he put there. But uh, all in all, apart from the size of the, of the pieces, I would like it a lot chunkier. Um, and the fact that he used pitted olives, but overall, uh, I wouldn't 
fault it apart from the cayenne pepper i would say that yes this is this is a tasty greek salad uh, to have um uh, so uh, I'm, I'm i'm quite happy with that which means we can go ahead and finish this up adding the rest of the cheese either by mixing it in now and then serving up or serving it up and then scattering the rest of the cheese over which is my preference and we'll go ahead and finish that off with one last scattering of freshly chopped oregano and that's it. You see, in the bowl there, how we're gonna use, what are you gonna eat with your fork in there? There's no way that your fork is gonna be able to get all of these pieces there. You, you're gonna have to use a spoon. <laughs> and eating a Greek salad with a spoon, it's like eating a soup with a fork. <laughs> it just, it, it's, it seems weird. Um, so this is the reason why I prefer chunky pieces. They may not look good in a photo or in a video, but it definitely are better when you eat them. Our big fat Greek salad is ready to enjoy. So let me go ahead and grab a spoon and dig in. Oh yeah, spoon's better than a fork for this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Spoon is better than a fork on this particular salad made in this video. But definitely if you're talking about a big fat Greek salad or any Greek salad, fork is definitely than a spoon. Uh, Fork is better than a spoon. Fork is the utensil to use, not a spoon. Sorry. And there's no mystery why this is considered one of the world's great salads. Above and beyond being absolutely gorgeous, it has such a perfect combination of textures and tastes. Okay, it's cold, it's crunchy, it's bracing, it's salty, it's sour, it's sweet, it's tangy, it's... Well, I ran out of words. I couldn't agree more. But to summarize, it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, and if you happen to be a fan of gazpacho, once this salad's gone, refrigerate the leftover juices, and you're going to be enjoying one of the greatest cold, unintentional soups ever. <laughs> this video is, is creating a bit of an up and down feeling for me. <laughs> um, at this point, I like, you see, that is how the juice in the Greek salad is, should be at the bottom. So I like the fact that he said he spoke about the juice and how you should keep it and cherish it. But the reason that he then says, i.e. use it as a cold soup, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You eat it there and then. All you need to do is get some crusty bread and dip it in the juice and eat it. That would be amazing. Uh, that's what Greeks do. But you don't keep it in the fridge and use it as a cold soup, no. A cold soup, no, no, definitely no, not a cold soup. Uh, you know, dip it, dip your bread in it, dip your bread in it. But anyway, that's it. What I and like a thousand other people are calling a big fat Greek salad. This is like the perfect thing to bring when you have to go to one of those things where you're supposed to bring something, but you forgot. And you're like, I thought that was next weekend. And your wife's like, no, it's this weekend. Because this is so quick to put together and gorgeous and delicious. It really is the perfect thing to bring. Or of course, just make it for yourself. But either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Okay, uh, yes, I hope you enjoyed the video as well. Uh, it was a good video, a very good video. Um, as I said, apart from the cayenne pepper, um, I wouldn't fault any of the ingredients that you put. I would maybe do the techniques uh, different. Uh, but it's very enjoyable. And yes, one of the uh, videos so far that, you know, give you a good idea of a, of a proper Greek salad. Um, so I'm putting the links to the Food Wishes website and this particular video uh, on the comments below so you can go and uh, watch, uh, watch it yourselves. Uh, but uh, if you would like to also see any more videos from us or you would like to see videos that we've posted, please make sure that you press that all important subscribe button. Uh, it's free to do. It only takes a couple of seconds, but it means a lot to us because it allows our channel to be viewed by more and more people. Uh, so if you like Greece, if you love Greece, uh, just keep on following us. And uh, I'm not gonna leave you empty handed. If you look on the screen that uh, appears in a few seconds on your screens, uh, you're gonna see some other videos uh, from our channel that may, you may be interested in. Uh, but uh, until the next time that I will be with you, enjoy your day and thank you for watching.